So I, I admit I'm, I'm terrible, so don't laugh too loudly. But here I go. And I don't shoot your team. All right, so I'm going to talk to him. If I hit the chat, we get all of the keys here, right? I'm in the chat window, and I'm getting ready to die, but I die. It goes back to the game keys. So yeah, I better let me get myself out of harm's way here. We'll ambush them. So that's this is the, the the point of this demo is not so much how bad I am at CS:GO, but it's more about this effect, mm -hmm. and and what we got the feedback. So we we thought this was a great idea, and then we we're like, okay, we you know we we pitched it to the pro gamers, and they're like, yeah, that would be great because sometimes I'm in the chat window and I don't realize it, but if my keys all changed when I did that, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'll take your shots. Here, let me run for my life. <laughs> Back me up, guys. So the other thing. Ah! <laughs> the other thing we're talking. Reload, reload, reload. Okay. Right. <laughs> 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 so anyway, the other thing we talked to those guys about is imagine your weapons are on top and one of them runs out of ammo. You can turn that light red and maybe it's flashing, so you know, okay, don't yeah. switch to that weapon because I'm out of ammo. Yeah, yeah. So that's funny. Yeah, we had a b bunch of ideas about this, and you know, we were we were thinking, yeah, you get the reload when you hit it, and so on. Potentially for mobiles, you could have cooldowns as well. Oh, you're our That'd setup man ah, for our next awesome. demo. You're <laughs> our setup man. So, you know, we were thinking the same thing. So, <laughs> it's brilliant. So, um, Doug here. Here's a game called World of Warcraft. Yeah. You might have heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so we so we we set up a demo here, and Doug is a Doug is a World of Warcraft guy. Take it away, Doug. So this is an example of a character that has a class that has a lot of cooldowns, Shaman. So if you look over here, we have keys that are lit blue, ready to go, and they match our powers up here. Uh, one in four, which is Flame Shock and Earth Shock, actually share a cooldown, so you kind of can see what's going on. Uh, Lava Burst here has a eight second cooldown. This is an instant spell, Lightning Bolt, but it has 1.8 second cast, so we map these cooldowns and cast times to the keys so that the keyboard can actually give you some utility and show you what your cooldowns are like. So here's an example. You can see that these two keys are now not functional. They're tied together. As soon as they come off cooldown, they'll be back to ready. This is like the instant cast. You can see it took its cast time and then it was ready right again. Um, lava burst. Oh, don't die. <laughs> yep. As it comes back off of cooldown, it's going to snap back to blue. Um, so it's, and also, as a secondary example, we kind of highlight some other keys that aren't related to uh, fighting or activity. So as you can clearly color, because every single key is RGB individual lit, you could have it be interactive for each spell ability, each utility like map or inventory. Um, you could have certain keys light up as they become available, because sometimes you know, spells or abilities will become available after you cast another spell. Uh, another really cool thing too, if you think about um, other games like StarCraft where you have uh, tech trees that become available and move down your keyboard as you play and level in the game, we could have those light up. Um, it's kind of exciting and fun. Uh, other really cool cosmetic things, this is interesting because I think people <laughs> love to have the keyboard be sort of a an interactive second screen in some ways. Like one example, one of the Hearthstone guys said, wouldn't it be great if when you have a Ragnaros card and he's casting Firebolt, if it could explode red on your keyboard? And we're like, yeah, that, that would be cool. Or um, Frostbolt with like the mage. Uh, I have a friend who I play Diablo with quite a bit and we were, we were chatting about it. And one of the things, the things that she wanted to do is when you kill the loot goblin, he kind of like shoots these you know, gold everywhere and gives you items. And so we're like, wouldn't it be neat if it was raining gold on your keyboard? So we could totally do that. You kind of saw the really neat effects. Um, or like Star Wars, for example, there's like a lightning key. You could have lightning shoot out over your keyboard. There's all kinds of, it's really your imagination is the limit. Yeah. Could, could, could you use the keyboard as sort of like a directional tool? So where there is loot, yeah, so where, where, where there is loot it will do it. Uh, like well, not the, not maybe the loot, but one thing we were talking about before though was the acoustics, yes. because I'm like, an audio guy, like so, yeah, so if yeah. you're hearing shots come from this side, we can have it light up, 
so right on the, the side the acoustics yeah. are coming from, mm-hmm. which would be we cool. We were talking to the pros yeah. yesterday, and they said, you know, that could be really interesting for mm-hmm. hearing impaired gamers yeah. that are yeah. at a disadvantage because mm-hmm. they don't have right. the headphones for the surround sound, exactly. but you could give them a visual cue from where yeah. it's coming from. That's kind of a really cool right, idea. Right, because yeah. we, we could find the surround sound energy, mm-hmm. and then you could project it the, the, on the keyboard from the edges. The, the, the issue Asus had with their second iteration is that they allowed you to configure it for frequency range. So depending on the game, whether it was high uh, frequency yeah. noises or low frequency noises. We're looking at different uh, EQs for that. Yeah. So that, that would be one cool way you could integrate it into yeah. there, and you yeah. could actually pinpoint on the game the specific sounds you're looking for. Mm-hmm. There's, there's totally fun stuff. You know. I don't know if Bill showed you over here, but this is what we are messing around with yesterday. Like I made the American flag. <laughs> and then the other team said, well, I'm going to make the German flag. I'm from Germany. And I said, well, I'm going to make a shout out to my people. So I made the Indian flag. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's all sorts of fun things you could do with the keyboard to, to kind of customize it. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's a, it's a really cool pipeline that you build from your PC into the keyboard for data, right? So we open it up to developers. We're working with developers working with the community. Can right. the developers send you like a profile? Like if you if you have so say a developer particularly wants to set up a lighting profile with people, can it come available through the software? Um, well, it's kind of the other. Like we provide them with all the software to do whatever they want, and yes. then we support them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. But what we are looking at is the ability for like uh, regular consumers to be able to share profiles. So right, if yeah. you make something really cool, then you could put it out to the community and say, hey, look what I did. Or, but you but, but, but if, if somebody has a good profile, will it ever become part of the default stack that you ship out with software? Uh, if it were good enough, sure. Yeah, I never sure. say never. It would be kind of yeah. cool, like yeah. a way to appreciate yeah. people. Yeah, exactly. You could you do know, it with gamers. You could do it with, say, esports stars. You could just have yeah. like, this is this is their lighting profiles. configuration. Exactly. Yeah. This yeah, videos absolutely. from League of Legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to know, yeah. yeah, that could be pretty cool. Well, so, well, so, well, how big is your current developer base with the SDK? So, sort of how many people have signed up yeah. online to the forums and downloaded the software? Well, it it doesn't exactly it doesn't exactly work like that. So we work directly with uh, game developers, yeah. right? And so those are our partners, and you know we have I, I we have mean business public, relations. Public SDKs. Well, the public SDKs you don't have to sign up to do anything. You can right. simply go onto our site and download it. So yeah. we don't track any of that. We just say. Do, do, do you have track? How many downloads you've got there? Oh, sure. Yeah, but I don't have that number on my right on, right on my fingertips. But uh, yeah, so we've we've made it we've made it publicly available. All of the SDKs are available, and what we're counting on is that the community will do what they usually do. They are more creative, and they have more ideas certainly than we do. And we love to see what they come up with. And it's we've amazing. talked about doing hackathons yeah. and uh, uh, doing side, other ways to support them. Yeah. Yeah. On the dev cool. side, we're working with all the top publishers. I mean, yeah. They can't too. announce yeah. anything yet because they don't want us to talk about the stuff that they're doing, but, yeah. but we're working with all the top guys right now. Exactly. So, exactly. so, um, so with that, uh, let, me, let me show you our, our ARCS control. The ARCS control is, is hidden behind a wall garden here. So uh, let me get reconnected real quick. It connects over Wi-Fi to uh, to the LGS that's running on this on this machine, and and what you see are the games that are loaded. This shows you all of the games that are that are loaded on this PC. It also shows me what's running. It's got a little halo around it, and I can do I can do some interesting things. I can, for example, uh, start a game from here. We thought that was going to be a really brilliant idea, and then when we actually tried it, we said, well, your PC is right here. I don't know what real <laughs> value that has, but uh, but we left it in, so it's there. Um, then down here along the bottom bar are all of your applets. And applets are small applications that run within the upper window. And this is the part that the SDK supports. So we've developed, we knew we weren't going to have anything right away, so we developed a few applets just to, just to show the concept and also to you know, get, get some <coughs> metrics going. So we have an applet that shows you your current PC stats. It's, uh, you know, the idea is this is your Arcs control link, and you can sit here. It, it runs on phone and on tablet. Android and iOS. Uh, we can see the you know the, the CPU usage, GPU, and memory. Also, if you have it's not required. You don't need to have a Logitech device in order to to use the Arcs control. You just need to in, install the Logitech gaming software and download the app from uh, from the iTunes Store or from uh, uh, Google Play. Yeah, but if you do have a Logitech device. We provide some features that, that you wouldn't normally have. So for example, if I'm in playing a game, 
and I want to change my DPI, I can do it right from here. I don't have to go back here, open up the DPI, and, and modify it. I can just try, try to use the buttons on the mouse. If you've programmed them, but you may want to tweak them. So the but that will just move you between them, but if you actually want to change them, I can just go here and, and change it. And now my DPI is all over the place. Or if I want to go back to my defaults, I don't have to click through three buttons. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, a quick job. We have, we have uh, remote control ability, so media, media control, you can change your volume. And you can connect as many uh, devices running Arcs Control to your PC as you want, there's no limit. So you could have you know, your phone and your tablet and your other tablet and have them all with different things on them, <laughs> if you wanted. Um, One of the things we're looking at for the, that we were talking about earlier would be like a mini map. That'd be really cool on like an iPad mini, you could have a mini map on that. And, uh, and you can also take a look at your, uh, at your current configurations without having to go back. So if you wanted to take a look like during a game, what do I have, you know, what profiles do I have set, you can quickly take a look here. But, um, you know, and this is sort of interesting, but not really the story of arts control, right? I mean, what we really wanted was an immersive gaming experience. And while this is interesting and, and pretty cool, um, it's not really an immersive gaming experience. So in, in order to be able to demo this, we wanted to find a vehicle. We didn't necessarily know what it was going to be, but we found a game, a Soto Corsa, that actually exposes some of its game data that we could ourselves integrate and create an app. So what I'm going to show you is the actual real in-game integration um, from a game to the, uh, to the Arch Control using our, our SDK. So what I need to do is we have a little application here. And when I run this, I get a new item down here, which is, which is the applet for a Septal Corsa, and it also shows me some of my in-game data, which is uh, my, my current car, wheel pressure, temperature, my lap, and so on. So I'm sitting here spinning around, I've, uh, I've gone off track. But let me, uh, let me get myself readjusted. I'm going to be driving with a mouse. No, it's, not, it's, not, it's not as easy as it looks, so let me get going here and I'll show you what I mean. So here I am racing down the road. It shows you everything here. You, you see uh, current stuff. I can slide this over and I have, my, uh, I have my speedometer tachometer in real time from the game along with my current gear, fuel, and so on. So if, I, I, if I get low on fuel, it's going to uh, it's going to start flashing red on me. I can I can flip back here while I'm while I'm crashing. Hey, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, okay. So you you, so you get the idea. So this is an example. <coughs> excuse me. This is an example of of what we're talking about when, when we're saying you know full second screen experience. I if I were driving with a wheel instead of a mouse, right? I can have that view that's outside of the cockpit, right, with all of my in-game information. And, th you know, this isn't like the, you can think of other things that would be totally awesome, uh, you know, if you, if, you were playing, if you were playing Dota 2, instead of pulling in a screen in order to check items, you'd have it right here and you could just touch, you know, your next build. Kerbal something. Space Program would be Kerbal awesome Space Program well. would be awesome like for that. Talking camera on yeah. I thought if we could do it, so we'd need, we'd need more data than what they, than what they represented here, but uh, you could have a rear view mirror, right. right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you could do, right? It's just, it's really just putting up, it's really just putting up regular information. So you guys were, were looking here, I'm sure, but did you notice what was happening here? Yes. Okay. So for those of you that didn't see, let me just get, I'll give you a, another quick run here and give me another chance to redeem myself here on the track. Um, so watch the keyboard this time. So what we've done is we integrated two SDKs into this, both the uh, Arcs Control and the LED SDK. So if I hit my brakes, you can see I'm hitting brakes, accelerator, brakes, and tachometer here. And actually, this is fuel. If I were running out of fuel, this would slowly go down. Now you're wondering, why, 
Why in the world would you do that except uh, you know, to show off that you could do it? Um, well, there's an interesting case where I would normally be driving with a wheel, and I wouldn't be driving with a keyboard. And I can actually have my keyboard here giving me that sort of information while I'm, while I'm using my wheel to drive. So it, it gives you kind of an interesting visual feedback that could be, <coughs> that could be useful. And you could have the same out-of-cockpit out driving experience. So. so there's an example of, uh, of what's possible with the arcs control.